let's continue with Azure Container App Jobs. Not the scheduled tasks, not the cron jobs that we did last time, but this time I'll use the Azure Service Bus event trigger. So I'll just use the Microsoft official documentation as a starting point, but I'm going to go straight to set scaling rules in Azure App Containers. Let me open up my Azure portal. Because yeah, setting up the container app is going to be the same as last time. Only now we have a different trigger, which is going to be this uh, event trigger. I'm going to use the custom one to leverage the Azure service bus. And custom. And we have a lot of things about Keda. But that's going to serve as an example, more as a documentation of the variable names. And let's make that work. Right. So currently I have this pet adopt spotlight job running on Azure, which is triggered every five minutes and that runs a background worker service. But that's not ideal because it's basically every five minutes uh, the app application starts, but all the application does is um, check the message bus for new messages. And then it shuts down and it waits another five minutes, more or less. So that's not ideal. Uh, let's take a look at the application. Basically, background worker service. We're running just once and then we stop the application until the next trigger. The message receiver basically just uses receiver client coming from the NuGet package, one of my own, which you can get on Gisco.com products at the top. You can sign up and get the original source code of my NuGet packages, and that would be the Azure Service Bus package, just a simple wrapper. And yeah, receives messages processes them and completes them. That's it. Now we, instead of polling every five minutes, we rather uh, have Azure Service Bus tell us when a new mes message came in. And that way, maybe it only runs once a week, maybe it only, or, or it runs constantly. Um, and you can even have uh, scaling. So if multiple messages come in that have a few replicas running but strangely enough, I'm not going to edit the code because we're still going to have to check the message bus for new messages. It's not like an Azure Cloud function where you have an endpoint which is going to receive the new message straight away. So it's still, we're only changing the trigger type instead of uh, the cron expression. It's now coming from the Azure service bus. All the code examples that I found were either in Python or JavaScript, and that was similar. We still had to connect to the or the topic and basically fetch the messages ourselves. Okay, so let's create a new one. Going to name it similar. I'm just gonna prepend it with event. Let's see. So it's gonna be that adopt a uh, spotlight event, if I'm not mistaken. We're going to select event driven. The environment is OK, and this should be similar to the previous one. So we took, we're going to use the Azure Container Registry. It's not going to be C. The image which we should already have now. Select tag latest. Comment override none. Always take the least resources to save costs, as I think. Um, event driven, event driven job skill rules monitor. Blah, blah, blah. The job executions. How many job executions to start? See people scale it to 10. Hmm, let's do that. Polling interval. 
let's see let's start with 60 seconds and then these job scaling rules are different well the skill rule settings is different now we need to rely on that KEDA specification first we can just say hmm, let's just have a look here so basically just following go to the azure portal select skill edit well not that um add minimum maximum replica range basically what we did uh, anyway so we already selected the custom skill rule uh from okay find the type value so this is important to get azure service bus uh, custom rule type is Azure Service Bus. Uh, rule name, I don't know, topics. And then the metadata. So my topic name would be, in production at least, would be, let's see, but topic name. Well, if you're using topics, yeah, of course topic name and subscription name instead of queue name if you're using the topics and the rest seems optional subscription name let's see mm. now we're likely missing the connection string No, we're just going to create this thing. In the meantime, I'm going to turn off Bad Adopt Spotlights. Hmm. Can only delete it. Oops, there's one running as well. So every five minutes, this one was getting triggered, basically reading out the message bus, but there's almost never any messages in there. So list of resources, potentially. We're all generating logs as well for nothing, I guess. Okay, going to the resource, I deleted the other one. Now we only have pet adopt spotlights event, trigger type event, replica timeout, replica retry limit. A lot of things, different things we can change in the configuration. Let's see. Seconds. 1800, that's quite a lot. Probably 30 minutes or something. Well, we're not doing much in here, so let's just put it at. Yeah. Uh, hmm. 300. Should be five minutes. Event driven scaling. Here we can change the max executions. Pulling interval. Seems like 20 seconds, didn't I? But one minute, 60 seconds or something. Let's try to trigger a spotlights event. The code was, of course, already built in an image and we didn't. Similarly, like I did in the previous video, this uh, scheduled tasks video. So let's give it a go. Um, we didn't do any code changes, which is nice. What was a bit unfortunate is there weren't too many examples for this, maybe because it's too easy or maybe not many people, well, meaning no one really has issues with it, which is a bit suspicious, but okay. Let's just give it a go. To try it on the live environment, I'm going to have to go to leisure.com and put one of these lovely dogs in the spotlight. Let's see. The Malinois kind of need it. Then we go to spotlight. Ah, damn it. As an admin, I could put dogs in the spotlight for free. So let's now do this one. Let's see. Oh, 
Okay. We've got one message. Let's see. Delivery count zero. Create spotlight. Okay. Okay, so nothing's really happening. That's not surprising. I assume I didn't authenticate, but what I now saw is if I click these rules, so I've got this one, but now I also see an authentication section. So basically here I could set a new uh, key value parent secrets and then select that one. Oops, so let's try that. I'm gonna delete this one. And we'll go to the secrets. Add a new one. Maybe I can give it whatever name. Let's see. I did have something here. So what's happening here? It's parameter connection name my secrets key connection string secret. Let's just try connection and put it. Paste the value. Let's now go back to event driven scaling and select the connection. Oops. What is this? Enter trigger parameter. Um, just gonna put connection here as well because that's what I'm seeing in this schema secret target ref parameter connection. And a name I could have given, whatever name. Let's see. Aha, uh -huh. now I went to the logs. Got a few errors. The last one says error parsing Azure Service Bus metadata. No connection setting given. given. And it says event source KEDA, KEDA scaler. So that's using that behind the scenes. Um, so what I'm going to do now. I assume I have to put back that uh, connection metadata thingy. Let's see. Oops. No, polling interval is 20 seconds. I assume we'll have to wait for that. Um, but in the meantime, let's check out the logs. Oh, there's some normal logs in there. Then a warning, created one job. Ooh. Is it working? Chris has exited, that could be just because I did uh, host stop host. Created one jobs. Let's see. Okay, that looks like succeeded. Let's now see if our message is actually gone. Yay! Our message is gone. Is it in the dead letter? Nope. Okay. Seems good. Now, let's uh, go to leisure.com, see if the dog actually got the spotlight. Success. So this one I put in the spotlight for free as an administrator and then that one I paid for two euros to put this lovely boy in the spotlight to increase the chances of adoption. Okay, that was all. Uh, it wasn't that hard. It was a bit... Uh, had to browse a bit to find the, the the settings that I needed to apply and then... Thanks to our, my previous video, we already I already built the image and everything, so that wasn't an issue this time. But yeah, that's how you use the event trigger with Azure Service Bus on a C-sharp background worker service. Don't forget to check out my products on kisco.com slash products or get the source code for free when signing up of the NuGet packages and signing up can also get even more source code on my Patreon by subscribing here. Um, and the products can also be found on there.
So leave a like and subscribe if this was useful. See you in the next one.